just a little short video, just a short little video. Something that us in the gallery group were talking about last night was how strong are these werewolf tribes in comparison to each other? Let's get this off the screen. There were two obvious picks between the two of us. The Geta Fenris and the Silver Fangs. Those are the two strongest tribes in all of Werewolf the Apocalypse. But who exactly is the strongest one? When you look at this, the Geta Fenris and the Silver Fangs, well, in the middle of our discussion, we came to this being a conversation between two different schools of thought. The Geta Fenris being more practical and the Silver Fangs being more risky. So I thought it'd be a nice little thing to go over which one is necessarily stronger, and if you were to really power game, what well, what would be the best option? Let's look at the GFMs first. First of all, big shout out to this website, City of Mush, uh, no, City of Hope Mush, .net. You've been a great help for our channel. Thank you so much for still being up. Whoever's still running the site, thank you, thank you, thank you. Looking at this, a lot of this information is you can see the sources down here goes up to revise. There's nothing on the site in relation to 20th edition, definitely not 5th edition. But I don't think W20 is that consequential to this discussion. It only adds in a few more gifts in comparison to what the content that's in revised. Looking at this, you see this is the list of GIF and risk gifts right here. And the school of thought, all of these have very practical, various but it's obvious what these do. You want to deal more damage, raise a claws. You want to be tankier, resist pain. You want to survive fire, sig and stride. Uh, all of these you're seeing at level one have very brief descriptions, very obvious applications, very low cost. It's one rage, one willpower. It's very easy to find a spirit that will teach you this because what, what a bear spirit, you can just go anywhere in the world and find this or even easier of being owl spirit. You look at the Silver Fangs, and these get a little bit crazier. I have the Falcon, Falcon's Grasp, Ice Dance, Lambent Flame. This description start growing in length, and you start noticing that it becomes a little bit more complicated to learn some of these, because Lambent Flame, that's a loon. You can uh, if you can find a loon, and you're able to negotiate with a loon, you are a cut above your average Geru, because it's very hard to negotiate with that spirit in particular. And along with an ice elemental, are you going to find that while you're in, I don't know, Brazil, Mexico, most parts of India, Sub-Saharan Africa? Not. You're in a bit of a tighter spot with the Silver Fangs. But you look at some of these gifts, where just read out Ice Dance, I won't lay it right out to you. you. You can see on the screen. Or at least I'm pretty sure you can. We'll see what the video quality looks like. A lot of these have crazier effects. The Gaia Firmus use the gift... You get what you asked for. With these Silver Fangs, these are level 1 gifts all the same, but they just do more. Some of these have multiple uses. Lambent Flame in particular. This is great. This is absolutely great. This is a almost a must-have power if you're playing this Silver Fang. And same with level 2. We start going into this, and once again, these powers are very simple. Snarl the Predator, very good. Troll Skin, very good. You look at our Rage Cross New York live play, if you watched it, thank you if you have. And Trollskin, our cast member Ryan, his character Grim, used this constantly the minute he got it. And it was great. It made a strong character even stronger. You look at the level 2 gifts with the Sword Fangs, you get awe. And you start getting crazy with these powers. The Geru rules appearance and empathy. If successful, the difficulty for all social roles made by the Geru against that target is reduced by 1. And a Geru's target difficulty to hit um, in combat is increased by one. That's fantastic. That's a level two gift. You have to find a Falcon Spirit. We're good luck finding that, but that's incredible. Same with Luna's Armor, Reason's Grasp, Word of Honor. You scroll down the rest of these, and when you hit level three, you start getting game-breaking powers like Silver Claws. You want to talk about having a clave? No, you are the clave with this power. You want one of the best debuffs in the game? It's Wrath of Gaia right here. And so much of this stuff is just fantastic until you eventually reach 4th level where this is rare that you see this in most 
World of the Apocalypse games, rarely do you ever see a level 4 or level 5 player in World of the Apocalypse, but if you had these, Mastery, Mind Block, Ignore Death Blow, Luna's Avenger, and Paws of the Newborn Cub are all fantastic, and The Secret of Gaia, you look at this, you, you look this gift up, this is fantastic, and then you go back to the Gaffemus, and it's still very simple powers. Albert's Claws, Loki's Touch, Mind of Thor, Mind of Thor is incredible. Because, in theory, you could be going around with, say, 18 strength for what... Because going off of this, but the gear strength doubles for one turn per success. And off of a simple willpower roll difficulty 8. You will be one-shotting bosses like Thunderworms with that power. So, you, both of these tribes are very powerful right out the gate at level 1. And stay powerful and just continue to get powerful as the game goes on until you're doing stuff that's absolutely incredible with the Gaffin Rest like the Finrear's Bite, Hordes of Valhalla. It depends on what necessarily do you want with your character. Because the Gaffin Rest, it's simple. It's the same as playing a fighter or a bard in Dungeons and Dragons. You run up to the enemy, you hit the enemy, the enemy dies. You want to do something crazy like wizards and sorcerers can in D&D, you play as a Silver Fang where these powers have more applications and technically are better in every sense, but they're harder to get your hands on and tend to have steeper costs. Look over at the Gaffemus tribes and uh, the rites, them and the Silver Fangs. Once again, very simple with the Gaffemus. You want to do a little mystery. You want to find out who's your daddy. You want to go an episode of Mari. You have Rive Heritage. You want to tell the future. You do the rite of rune carving. There's the runes. You just spill these out on the floor. You spell a word with it. It tells the future. Rite of War. Rite of the Challenge. These are very simple, very easy to understand rites that I don't think you're going to struggle performing any of these. Like Even the rite of Conquest, that's not that difficult to do. If you're a Gav Famous and you're level 5, you're, you're fine. You, you can pull this off. You look at the Silver Fangs, on the other hand. What is this? The Rite of Breeding, the Rite of Honorable Oath, the Rite of the Loyal Pack. If you get these wrong, they can be absolutely disastrous. But once again, it's higher risk, much higher reward in comparison. And when you get over this Rav Kingship, well... Behold, the minute you get this and this goes off, you're, you're set. You're not. You don't have much to worry about with your Silver Fang. So, it's a little strange. Where should we place these guys? Well, let's try discussing maybe the tribe weaknesses. With the Gaia Fenris, it's the intolerance tribe weakness. Uh, you're an asshole. There's just one thing in particular that you really hate, and that's it. Really, I mean, Garu aren't necessarily nice all the time, this is something that you are already going to do being a Gale Famous, given the tribe culture. The Silver Fangs, not only do you get the derangement, not only do you need to have your will, your background points spent in pure breed, you need to be honorable, you need to commit to the role of being a Silver Fang. You have a lot riding on your shoulders, you are meant to be the leaders, the kings of the Gero Nation. Act like it. You gotta act like you got some guts, you gotta act like you got stones. No, don't show weakness. Don't be a pussy. You gotta have power as a Surfang, but you also have to have power with just about any other werewolf. It just stands to a higher standard with the Surfangs. Along with that, the derangement that you have to take, that is either something you can work around or something that's absolutely debilitating, depending on what kind of game you're running. If you're running a game that's very dialogue heavy, a Silver Fang isn't going to perform too well because the Silver Fang is crazy. If you, you, You're going to have to rely on your Chata Gaia or Fianna to pull you through that game if you're playing a Silver Fang in a very political werewolf game. In combat, not so much. I mean, can, can you really refer to any member of the Garo Nation nowadays as sane? All these guys have pretty big problems. So I, it, it's ultimately up in the air where, where when we were talking... Last night, we said that the Gaffemus are stronger, but better, uh, the go-to power gaming option, just because of how simple and easy to use the Gaffemus are, but the power ceiling is so much higher with the Silver Fangs. So, ultimately, it's up to your opinion. Where do you think this really lies? If you're going for a quick and easy build, you know the game is going to be short, it's going to be 
over and done with within a few weeks, Get Fenris is your obvious option. If this is going to be a long running game that lasts, say, a year, and you're going to get leveled up, you're going to face against enemies that were well, de combat and werewolf is already deadly, but the, the really deadly enemies, like the Thunderworms, the Melgen and Karna, the forces of the Kuei Jin, vampires, you're going to want to go with a Silver Fang. So I think it ultimately depends on what situation are you going to be in as a player that will decide whether or not the Gedefimris or the Silver Fangs are the stronger one. And I think that's just good game design on part of Werewolf the Apocalypse, that there is no go-to option in this game. Because granted, the Gedefimris and the Silver Fangs, you're going to face a lot of opposition in roleplay, just because of how bad the reputation of both of these tribes... <laughs> I mean, you you want to put a Gedefimris in the same room as a Black Fury and a Child of Gaia, or a Silver Fang in the same room as a Shadow Lord, a fight's going to break out. So, But then again, none of these tribes are really concerned with that. So uh, ultimately, it's up to you. And at the end of the day, just play what you want. Alright, this is Giant with Gallery Group, over and out.